<clears throat> How do you like my background today, Cole? Pretty good. Is it one of those double page spreads I'm looking at? Uh, do you know that I was published in Lenswork? Issue no. Number I don't have it in here anymore. Wow. Image number one, I mean, issue 165, I think. No way. You were. I know. You know why? <laughs> Brooks just mentioned it in Out of Chicago. He said, it, being an editor, you're sweating bullets, making sure you have content. And then behind the scenes, he told me, he says, you know, we were looking for something a tad better, but that's all we had was your Do rhythm you think <laughs> Do you think he was serious when he said that, that he's sweating bullets, that they'll have something good for their next issue? Nah, I think he's probably got a lot of good stuff in the wings. He has to, right? I, I, it would be very sad if really if people really are not submitting work. But then I look at me, it took me five years to finally do it. People who have self-doubts or are afraid of the rejection. I've been rejected by Brooks more times than I've been accepted. Well, what did he say? He said, well, and we gave him two more. So if you take Jennifer and David, you and me, there were four people out of those 50 instructors for Out of Chicago Live that have submitted work for lens work. Mm. That's crazy to think about mm. that. I saw Padma's uh, Black and White Flowers, uh, and I said, Padma, you need to submit those. Good for Just you absolutely stunning work yeah. good for you yeah and so I, I i i guess i can believe it when you do think about people's self-doubt yes yeah yeah well, and, and talking I'm a... about self-doubt let's talk about image reviews or critiques okay because you know i know that i'm an outlier and i know that i often have a view that is different than the mainstream but i got to tell you that i not only think that they're worthless, I think they're often harmful. And here's why. We're getting the opinion, when I sit before somebody, I'm getting one person's opinion out of 8 billion people on the planet. Now you might say, well, I really respect John's work, so I will take that as more significant than some guy living in Mongolia who's a sheep farmer. Yep. John knows photography. I like his work, so I trust his comments. But it's still bad in another way. I believe we are all becoming too dependent on others to tell us what to do. And we need to think more for ourselves. What do you love? What is your vision? If you're looking at an image you've created and you want to know if it's good or not, I say ask yourself. And if you don't like it, Instead of having someone else tell you what's wrong with it or what to do with it, analyze it yourself. There's nothing anyone else there out there knows that you can't learn. Hmm. So I'm a big advocate of critiquing your own work, studying that, coming back with fresh eyes week after week after week until you don't make any more changes. Asking yourself, what's strong in here? What was my focus? What do I want the focus to be? How can I strengthen that? What's weak here? How can I minimize that? What do I wish is gone? And I see so many people that I see them look at their image and they go, well, I would have really liked it except for this. And they don't then say, so I'm going to change it. They say, basically, I'm going to give up because I didn't like that. Yeah. Change it. Yeah. But see like, for yourself. You did that to me the other day, actually, Cole. And, and it was like, you know, I know this, you and I have talked about this probably on a previous show about this idea of self-critique, but I had sent you an image when we were out in, in uh, Alabama Hills, and I said, gosh, I just wish there was more separation between those monoliths and the background, and your response was so perfect. Make it so, John. You know, yeah. I mean, it, it was so weird that I, I needed to hear that. Like, I knew that. But, you know, and I, I think I wrote back too much work, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. but then, I, but I was so shamed into it. I did it. And it wasn't, it wasn't a lot of work. I was able to mask out those monoliths and then I could brighten up the background and boom, yeah, yeah. everything was the way I wanted it to be. And so I want to be real clear. So when you say 
you know, analyze your own work. Are you talking about, because it sounded a little bit like you were just talking about in the post-processing area to make some of those things changes in what you like. But I think you're also in, intimating that even in the field. So learn from your work in your self-critique so that next time you go shoot the dunes, you'll say, oh, you know what? I liked them, but boy, I wish I had had a longer lens, more reach. I I think I like the compressed dunes better, right? So that type of self-critique as well as sure. being in the darkroom and saying to somebody like me or, or teaching me to say, make it so, John. I mean, if you're in the post-processing phase and you want to make that background brighter than it really was in real life, number one, you have the creative license to do that. Do it. And just get it done. Go ahead. Now, I, I know a lot of people say, yeah, but when I get comments from experts, I'm able to separate out what I think from what they think. Let me tell you my honest thoughts. Bull. Yes. Huh? <laughs> when Brooks Jensen says to you, well, you might consider, I guarantee you almost every person to a, a you know, if you took a thousand people, 990 of them are going to go home and do that because Brooks Jensen said it. If Edward Weston said something, I'm going to take it seriously. See for yourself. There's nothing they can say that you can't have discovered on your own and learned for yourself. And it's a much stronger lesson when you learn for yourself. We don't have to turn to a YouTube video or a tutorial or a workshop or a critique to get our knowledge. We can learn ourselves. We have brains that can learn. Yeah. We don't have to be handheld for everything. And, and that takes a little bit of courage, to be fair, right? It does, to, because now, now you got to spend a little bit more effort and work to do that. But to me, I think what we're both saying here in, in a maybe more blunt way is, the easy way out is to go ask for somebody's opinion. Absolutely. The and let's hard, be honest. Oh, I'm sorry. Finish that. Yeah, no, the harder one is to sit down and, you know, open up five images from the last, five, you know, X amount of images from last year. Look at the Death Valley from 22 and 21 and 20 and 19 and 18 and start doing some self analysis. And I got to tell you, the most, the people I know who get critiques, here's what they're looking for, validation. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it makes it tough for a reviewer because you know, what are they supposed to say? They they might have their opinion of what you should do, but they don't want to impose their opinion. So they, they, they phrase it like, well, have you considered? But still, here's what I would respect more if reviewers did. Ask more questions of the photographer as to what they were trying to achieve. Ask them what is strong about this in, image in your opinion? What do you wish could have been differently? What don't you like about it? Is there anything you can do to minimize that? And walk them through a bit of a self-analysis instead of just telling them what they would do. Yeah, well, I, I've been at, uh, at an out of Sh Chicago live event, meaning a real one where you're in Death Valley. A real live event. <laughs> a, 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 not, not the online live event, which is confusing. But at an actual, you know, event where you're in the field in the Smokies or wherever, Acadia. And I've heard, you know, very well thought of instructors doing image critiques saying, well, you should have done this and you shouldn't do that. And it just makes the hair on the back of my neck go up. I would really much rather what you just said, hear them saying or asking rather, not saying, but asking questions. You know, so, okay, great. Interesting image. You know, what, what do you like? What were you trying to accomplish? What do you don't yeah. I like that much better. And I got to tell you, I bring up Padma again. She was one of the presenters at, out of Chicago. She was doing this demonstration of how she does this incredible light box, black and white flower images. Yep. And she would say, and I like it like this, but she would always qualify. But you've got to do it how you see it, you know, because we don't want to all become Padma's imitating Padma's black and white flowers. Yeah. And when I get people asking me how they should process their work, you know, I'll continually tell them, if I tell you what I would have done yeah. and you follow it, soon your work will begin to look like mine. Yeah. And you don't want that. Now, I know sometimes we think we want our work to look like somebody's we respect, but you don't. Yeah. You want it to look like your work. And yeah. they can't tell you about your vision. No. And if you say, well, I don't have a vision, that's why I'm here, then go get a vision. It's better spent than 
okay. paying somebody to tell you, you know, what's wrong with your work from their point of view. Yeah. Yeah. I did uh, just post a power line <laughs> image. <laughs> Two people. Real good, Barker. Isn't isn't that Cole's project? <laughs> and I and I wrote, my reply both times was, I was doing power lines before Cole was born. You know, <laughs> you weren't born before I was born. <laughs> oh yeah, I was. Yeah, no, but it's true though. Pete, I mean, I have been influenced, and there's no question by your work because I loved it before you and I even knew each other, and I reached out in that email many years ago. 10 years ago, actually, we decided that when we were together in Death Valley, we've known each other. But, uh, you know, it goes back to sometimes when you're doing honest work. Yeah, you might find somebody else is doing something similar. So, yeah, my sure. power line image might look like Cole's. But in all seriousness, I've been photographing power lines on and off way before I knew you. Right. You know, I mean, it's just something yeah. I've always been attracted to. Well, sir. People. <laughs> oh, oh. did my nose just grow like an inch and a half <laughs> no it happens now, remember that's the first portfolio i had in lens work yeah, because brain silos. The one, uh, that chuck kimberly had done i should meet that guy you know i'd love to take him to lunch i think you should bring him to like your mexican your favorite mexican <laughs> Down, yes. all right hey uh, good okay, discussion bud. okay